Headline, the Baltimore Ravens have officially dug themselves out of their 0-2 hole. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't take long last night to dig out of that hole uh, after they got the Buffalo Bills off the field last night quickly, which, by the way, the Jacksonville Jaguars would love to have had that blueprint for even a split second on wow. on Monday night. They don't have Derrick Henry. And uh, and then and then the Ravens took the field, handed the ball off to Derrick Henry in their famous wham play, and they went from wham to whoosh. And I, I, I've told this, you know, thought multiple times into this microphone over the almost 10 years we've been on the air. Our 10-year anniversary is coming up next week. And nobody has the speed and the size of Derrick Henry. We all know that. But every single time I see him get through the line of scrimmage with a full head of steam and standing upright like Eric Dickerson in the Sunday night broadcast did a great job of popping that video up on the screen, that film up on the screen last night as Henry was careening his way to a... 200-yard night, which he finished only one yard shy of, that I just hear the sound of wind whistling Hmm. as he runs. And he must hear that, I imagine, maybe through the ear hole of his helmet. If you drive on a freeway and have the window slightly open and you hear that noise whipping through the window that you have open just enough. That's what I imagine it's sounding as Derrick Henry goes on a long run, 87 yards, uh, and what appeared to look like a flag football touchdown as well. Untouched. And (laughs) longest run in the history of the Baltimore Ravens. By the way, not a bad way for your first touch at home under the lights in front of your newfound fan base. Not a bad way to start that one off. But it's only the third longest touchdown run in his career. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's just funny. That just doesn't even make sense. (laughs) What is this, Tech Mobile? Sometimes (laughs) facts just sound absurd Uh, saying them. Yeah. Wow. But it's true. And you kind of, when he does that to a team, you just feel like it's a wrap on the spot. Yeah, that game kind of felt over yeah. after that. But, but, <laughs> kind of but the Bills right? are the Bills, right? And 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 we saw what they just did, and they were three and zero for for a reason. It wasn't a fluke. We saw how they 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 snapped the Jaguars in two, and um and the Ravens just kept on pounding them and pounding them, and pounding them, and the reason why I feel like they have gotten out of their 0-2 hole, not just because they're now 2-2, two and two, but defensively, they were all over Josh Allen last night, and it took a Superman-type play to switch the momentum last night, where he was just inches away from the boundary with a third of the Ravens' defense chasing him, and he finds Khalil Shakir wide open, and it took that to finally switch momentum just for a brief bit on the Ravens defense until they got too cute on offense and the Ravens defense was all over that play and that essentially ended the game, that turnover. But they also, I think, have figured out what to do on offense. The run play from Henry that started this conversation was from the pistol formation. So what that means is Lamar is just in semi-shotgun and Henry is dotting the I Mm -hmm. that Lamar is helping form. So Henry can get a nice head of steam and wham and whoosh and touchdown. But they also started figuring out Let's put Lamar under center and Patrick Ricard, a full-on grown-ass man fullback in front of Derrick Henry, and come at you with damn near 600 pounds of human. 
And then when they're not in, let's get Justice Hill as a change. And then we'll play action and start playing off of all of that. And we got two tight ends. And we got Zay Flowers and Bateman will pop up every now and then. And Aguilar will do his business. And you could say that's less than. And you could make a case that there are better receiver rooms. But in terms of getting the lead and being able to dictate, the Ravens have shown that they're figuring out how to use Derrick Henry. And the offensive line is firing off better. And the defense is doing its thing. And Justin Tucker's not going to miss too often. And the Ravens reminded everybody why they were the one seed last year and eviscerating a Bills team that, again, was 3-0 and for good reason. So Ravens got to feel better about themselves over the last two weeks. Derrick Henry, you know, you could, if it wasn't for Saquon, the last two weeks from Henry would lead the league in rushing, by the way. And you've got a game at Cincinnati next. Two teams that started 0-2 and are digging themselves out of a hole in different manners. One who's done with that through four weeks in Cincinnati. Boy, needing to hold serve in a huge divisional game. And then next two games after that are must-see. Washington, which leads the NFC East. We'll talk about Jaden Daniels. And Tampa, which leads the NFC South. That's a Monday nighter at Tampa. And then at Cleveland, which is a whole different story. So the Ravens still have some work to do, but they've dug out of the hole. As for the Bills, I'm going to dig a hole and throw the, the film in it. You know, you could sit here and say they missed Stephon Diggs. Defensively, they just, they, they were not aggressive. You could see how things switched after halftime when they got aggressive with Lamar. They sacked him, got him three and out. Then they made a, a play, that Josh Allen play. So Allen is still superhuman Mandalorian type. And they just weren't aggressive enough on defense. And then the, the questions you have about their head coach and his decision-making and Sean McDermott, go for it on fourth down from your own 39 when the game's tied, but punt it when you're losing by a couple scores from the same exact situation from your own 39 and you punt it back and then it was a fourth and two earlier where they should have went for you're it. You're not aggressive hey, when you yeah. should be. And then you're aggressive when you shouldn't be certainly on offense when things are changing and you get too cute with some dipsy do and you damn near get your quarterback hurt and there's a turnover and that's an easy second guess. Because momentum did switch after that. And you just, you know, you you wonder, do they have enough depth at the receiver position? Keon Coleman dropped one that would have been a huge one right before the first half, but then made some really nice back shoulder grabs. Yeah. He's going to come on. Mm -hmm. I, I, and again, James Cook is really good. I, I'm not concerned. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dig a hole and throw the, the <laughs> film into it. For, for the Bills, that's one of those losses because you look at the rest of the AFC East, we'll see what the Dolphins look tonight with Snoop Huntley. The Jets had a chance to win a third game in a row, but offensively, it, it just looked dreadful for them, and they've got the Vikings next who are 4-0 with a huge win in Green Bay. And you've got the... Um, The Jets and the Vikings next is what I was saying. And then you got Houston next for the Bills, and then they're at the Jets on a Monday night. That's for the Bills. So I'm going to take the tape and throw it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.